Sunday, January 12th, tall volcano started to spew ash, prompting massive evacuation in nearby areas. It was placed under a level 4, which warns of a hazardous eruption that could happen within hours to days. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology raised alert level 4 and the tall volcano on Sunday night, hours after the phreatic eruption that occurred in the crater. According to Jenny Barclay, a volcanologist at the University of East Anglia, the biggest bang is not always at the beginning of an eruption. What if tall volcano eruption generates devastating tsunamis? But before we go further, let's check it out, fast facts about tall volcano. Taal Volcano is one of the country's 24 active volcanoes and is located within the Taal Lake, which is a freshwater lake in the province of Batangas on the island Luzon in the Philippines. The lake fills a large volcanic caldera formed by eruptions between 500,000 and 100,000 years ago. That crater lake is the world's largest lake on an island in a lake on an island and it in turn contains its own small island, Vulcan Point. Taal Volcano has 47 craters and 4 miles a complex volcano system. It has estimated 40 km wide zone of active volcanic activity in the zone. A total of 34 eruptions have been recorded within 448. The first recorded eruption was in 1572. The biggest eruption was recorded in 1754 it's lasted for seven months between May and December. So how do volcanic eruptions generate tsunamis? Let's take a look at two diagrams of how a volcanic eruption can generate a tsunami crisis in science Australia. Although relatively infrequent, violent volcanic tsunamis which used to be known as Zays are displacements or disturbances of the water column. According to this mechanism, waves may be generated by the sudden displacement of water caused by a volcanic explosion, by a volcano's slow failure, or more likely by a pre-dramatic explosion and collapse engulfment of the volcanic magmatic chambers. The volcanic eruption triggers number one, landslide. As you can see in the diagram presented, Tsunami schools by landslide, taking a deeper understanding of this as the waves approach shallow water. They definitely slow down, increase in height, and get closer together. This is what we call shoaling. In the orientation process, waves flooded all over run coastal areas. Then water draws back further than normal and is joined with the next inundating wave. That is generally how tsunami is being produced. Number 2 triggers is earthquake. Let's check it out the diagram again. If there is an earthquake at the ocean floor, this will result in a sudden rise or fall of the earth's crust. This moment can cause water above to rise or fall, creating of course tsunami waves in general. Let's take a look at one of the largest tsunami recorded in history. One of the largest and most destructive tsunamis ever recorded was generated in August 26, 1883, after the explosion and collapse of the volcano Krakatoa in Indonesia. This explosion generated waves at 335 feet, destroyed coastal towns and villages along the Sunda Strait in both the islands of Java and Sumatra, killing 36,417 people. So can all volcano eruptions possible of generating big tsunamis? The answer is yes. Tall current eruption also carries a tsunami risk because of the light surrounding it. If part of the volcano's flank collapses into the lake, it could trigger such a wave which eventually causes tsunami. 
the triggered tsunami will affect not only for those who live on the central volcanic isle, but also for the 25 million people living within 60 miles of the volcano, including a huge stumble on Lake Taal's shoreline. So what if the old volcano create a massive explosive eruption that triggers also a tremendous scale of earthquake that witches the intensity line and eventually causes devastating tsunamis? The worst scenario? What if it will affect those areas more than 60 miles of the volcano? What will happen to nearby areas of the old volcano like Laguna, Cavite and other coastal parts of Metro Manila like Malabon, Valenzuela, Paranaque City, Las Piñas, Port Areas, and Manila Bay. If that happens, let's take a look at the massive impact and aftermath of devastating tsunamis. First is destruction and environmental impact. The amount of energy and water contained in a huge tsunami can cause extreme destruction when it strikes land. Tsunami waves destroy boats, buildings, bridges, cars, trees, telephone lines, power lines, just about anything else in the way. Once the tsunami waves have knocked down infrastructure on the shore, then they continue to travel for several miles inland, sweeping away more trees, buildings, cars and other man-made equipment. The small islands hit by a tsunami are left unrecognizable. 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami was among the deadliest natural disasters in human history with at least 230,000 people killed or missing in 14 countries bordering the Indian Ocean. Tsunamis not only destroy human life, tsunami changes the landscape. It uprooted trees and plants and destroys animals' habitats such as nesting sites for birds. Land animals are killed by drowning and sea animals are killed by pollution if dangerous chemicals are washed away into the sea, thus poisoning the marine life. Another environment impact is also the man-made aspects of the environment. Solid waste and disaster debris are the most critical environmental problem faced by tsunami hit country. Number 2 of turmoil is dead and deceased. Even if you're inside a building, enjoying life like clubbing, if a destructive disaster comes, you cannot escape. One of the biggest and worst effects of a tsunami is the cost to human life because unfortunately escaping tsunami is nearly impossible. Hundreds and thousands of people are killed by tsunamis. Since 1850 alone, Tsunamis have been responsible for the loss of more than 430,000 lives. There is a very little warning before a tsunami hit land. As the water rushes towards the land, it leaves very little time to map and escape plan. People living in coastal regions, towns and villages have no time to escape. The violent force of the tsunami results in instant death, most commonly by drowning. Buildings collapsing, electrification and explosion from gas, damaged tanks and floating debris or another cause of that. The tsunami December 2004 destroyed Southeast Asia and East Africa killed over 31,000 people in Sri Lanka only, leaving 20,000 injured. Tsunami waves and the receding water are very destructive to structures in the run-up zone. The areas close to the coast are flooded with seawater, damaging the infrastructure so the sewage and as water supplies for drinking. Flooding contaminations of drinking water can cause disease to spread in the tsunami hit areas. Illnesses as malaria arise when water is stagnant and contaminated. Under these conditions, it is difficult for people to stay healthy and for diseases to be treated, so infections and illnesses can spread very quickly, causing more of that. Third aftermath is cost. Massive costs hit communities and nations when a tsunami happens. 
victims and survivors of the tsunami need immediate help from rescue teams. Reconstruction and cleanup of the tsunami is a huge cost problem. The total financial cost of the tsunami could be millions or even billions of dollars of damage to coastal structures and habitats. The loss of turmoil to psychological effects. Victims of tsunami events often suffer psychological problems which can last for days, years, or an entire lifetime. Survivors of Sri Lankan tsunami in the summer of 2004 were found to have PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, when examined with the World Health Organization. 14% to 29% of these were children, 40% of adolescents, and 20% of mothers of these adolescents. These people were suffering from grief and depression as their homes, businesses and loved ones were taken from them. That's all for today and we hope you did enjoy our video. Thank you very much for watching, please drop a like, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video uploads. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, stay tuned always, till next time, bye.